Hey guys, Monochrome here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Genuinely good to have you. Today, we're going to tackle a topic that I consider to be very important. It's top five mistakes when starting to EDC a handgun. Now, straight up, if you guys see a similar list on someone else's channel, they stole it from me. Just being blatantly honest, as usual. Okay, number one when it comes to mistakes. And this is going to be told from the point of view of addressing a person who is mature, responsible, someone who has decided, well, it's not just the world that's a dangerous place, it's my neighborhood. And after a lot of consideration, they've decided that a handgun would be best for them. So they've gone out, they've purchased it, they've gotten their concealed carry permit. And let's say this individual is intelligent enough to realize, hey, I need to get some training from a real expert, and then I need to hit the range on a regular basis and practice, practice, practice. Fantastic. So this video is for those types of individuals. And it's going to be a top five with a bonus honorable mention at the end. So the first one, buying the wrong handgun for you. And this could be anything from selecting one where the grip is uncomfortable and you would have been better off with a similar gun from a different company in the same caliber, or maybe you would have been better off with a completely different caliber. But oftentimes what I see is you get a responsible person, they go, they get training, and they take a look at what their instructor carries. And honestly, what works best for your instructor might not be ideal for you. Because a lot of instructors, first of all, they're male. Second of all, some of them do live this life. You don't. Let's face it. If you're new to this and you're going to get training, chances are you're overall happy with your life and your lifestyle. So you're looking for a handgun that you can carry concealed, that you can incorporate into your lifestyle as it is without changing your lifestyle to that of your instructors. And that's a very important thing to keep in mind, and it gets overlooked. And sadly, you have a ton of instructors who do not even address that issue because it doesn't occur to them. I mean, what I'm talking about is maybe your instructor's preferred EDC is something like this. A full-size Glock 17, or maybe the so-called compact Glock 19. And I say that because the, the only real, real difference between the two models is that the 19 is about an inch to about an inch and a half shorter at the muzzle, and about an inch, inch and a half shorter at the bottom of the grip. The rest of the dimensions are pretty much the same, except for weight, very slight difference in weight. But something like this squared off thick slide is going to be the same. But okay, a Glock 19 is technically a compact pistol, compared to its Glock Model 17 brother. So, okay. But, yeah, here's the thing. 
again, your instructor is part of that life. His job as an instructor is not just a job for him. Most of the time, it's part of his lifestyle. Yeah, you have people out there who live whatever lifestyle they enjoy, and then they have a job that they go to, they're miserable, but maybe it pays well, so they stick with it. And they don't consider their job to be part of their lifestyle. With a lot of firearms instructors, yeah, that's a different story. Their job, they see it as a career. They see it as part of their lifestyle. They are used to EDCing something as big as this or something as big as a ever so slightly compact Glock 19. And the truth of the matter is, for most people, something this big is just not going to work when they're trying to incorporate it into the lifestyle they already have. It's just not going to work. But they see their instructor wearing this during class, and they're like, that's the thing for me. Or maybe they'll ask the instructor and the instructor will be like, oh yeah, Glock or whatever brand of pistol they prefer. Sig, Smith & Wesson, and heck, maybe even Taurus, maybe. But okay. And what happens is the student goes out, they get themselves a Glock 17 or a Glock 19, they get a holster for it, and after a couple of days, they're like, this is too big, or this is too heavy, or this is too thick. Like, I'm, it's printing through my clothing, it's uncomfortable for me to carry this, and they realize they've selected the wrong gun. So, it's best not to look at what your instructor carries. Or, here's a dirty little secret. Not what your instructor wears during class. Because a lot of instructors who claim to carry something this size actually don't. Yeah. They'll walk around... During class, this is what they have. And when class is over, they'll take this, they'll lock it up, and then out comes their actual concealed carry pistol. Maybe something like this. A modern day, and again, training pistol, not the real thing, but a modern day, genuinely very compact nine millimeter pistol. This particular one is a representation of the kel PF9. Very popular nine millimeter pistol even though Keltec gets almost, almost zero respect by firearms instructors. And it's not just this particular model from Keltec. It could be a variety of different, genuinely very compact 9mm pistols from a variety of of different brands, but the dimensions on all of them, even though the designs will differ, the dimensions are going to be about the same all the way around. This is a genuinely compact pistol. The slide is rounded, it's not blocky. Sure. It'll hold less rounds than a Glock 17 or a Glock 19, 
but something this size is going to be much, much easier for a person to start incorporating into their lifestyle, into the clothing they wear. This, or something this size, is what a lot of instructors usually have strapped to their hip or concealed on their body when they're out and about in public. And then when it's time to teach a class, well, mm, can't let that macho ego, nope, can't let it be questioned. So this is what they have strapped to their hip when they're teaching a class. And then this is what they have strapped to it when they're out and about in public and no one can see what they're carrying. That's the reality. And yes, there are some instructors who will actually conceal carry a Glock 19 or a Glock 17, but those are extremely few and rare. The vast majority of them, yeah. So keep that in mind when selecting a pistol for you. You want something small, lightweight, but just heavy enough to control the recoil. And for some individuals, maybe a very compact 9mm isn't for them. Just a few years ago, a pistol this size was usually chambered in the weaker 380 ACP instead of 9mm. And 380 is a viable defensive round. I mean, if you can control the recoil of a 9mm from something this small, go for the 9mm. If you're having problems, honestly, no shame in considering a 380 as your personal carry firearm. All right. Second one. Buying a very expensive gun, but then you get an ultra cheap holster for it. No, no. This is what you need to do. You need to get a holster that costs very close to almost the same amount or even more than your concealed carry firearm. Now, that might seem strange at first, but think about it. Do you use your handgun every single day when out and about in public? No. No, you don't. Yes, you are carrying it with you. Yes, it is concealed, but you're not actually using it. Different story with a holster. When you strap on that holster to your belt in order to carry your chosen handgun, you're using that holster. You're using that holster each and every single day to carry your handgun. That holster needs to be high quality. Absolutely. So if you're buying a very expensive handgun, you should be looking at very expensive quality holsters to go with it. Because if you put an expensive gun in a cheap holster, well, it's not just the price tag that's cheap. It's the quality. And over time, if there's going to be a failure in your carry system, it's going to be with that holster. All of a sudden, your gun goes clattering down to the ground in front of a bunch of strangers out in public because your holster gave out, because you bought a cheap piece of junk that cost five or 10 bucks. And meanwhile, you put your $1,200 handgun in it. Brilliant. No, not brilliant at all. You're getting a quality gun, Make sure you get a quality holster to go with it. That's a mistake that a lot of first-timers make. All right? 
Next one. And this is a big one. You are responsible for every bullet you fire. Heaven forbid you get into a situation where you have to reach for your handgun and pull the trigger. You need to have training and tons of practice because maybe there's a violent attacker. He's about to kill you. And you put three bullets into him. And after the third one, he falls down or maybe he staggers off and decides to run away. Don't shoot him in the back. That's not self-defense. But okay, you fired three shots and it turns out, oh, two of them connected. Okay, well, where's the third shot? Oh, I don't care. Oh, you should care. You should care. Because, oh, look, your third shot traveled across the street and struck an innocent bystander who was waiting for the bus. Who's responsible for that? You are. You are. That's right, because legally, you are responsible for every bullet you fire. You can't just say, well, I was being attacked. It's his fault. No. No, it doesn't work that way. You fired three shots, two of them connected with the person trying to murder you. One of them connected with that innocent bystander waiting for the bus who may or who yeah may or may not be deceased because of that one bullet that you fired because maybe you didn't get enough training or maybe you didn't spend enough time practicing at the range. You are responsible. You have to keep that in mind. There have been cases of individuals who have been wounded or even killed because they got hit by a stray bullet being fired by an individual just trying to de defend themselves. It happens. So you need to train and practice and minimize the possibility of that happening. But always bear in mind, you are responsible for every bullet that comes out of your gun when you pull that trigger. All right. Next one, not carrying other self-defense tools, especially for encounters not warranting shooting someone. Here's the thing. Carry pepper spray. Carry a defensive pen. Because there's an old saying, if your only tool is a hammer, every single problem will start to look like a nail. I mean, you are going to be in some encounters where things have not escalated to the point where you would be justified in shooting someone. However, maybe things are at the point where you would be justified in striking someone with your tactical pen or using your pepper spray. There are going to be situations. I mean, if you have a really obnoxious homeless guy walking up to you asking for spare change and you decide you don't want to be bothered and then he starts to get aggressive, you know, he's got nothing in his hands, but he's yelling at you, arguing with you. He's pumping himself up. He's getting really angry. Well... If you suddenly realize you're cornered, what are you going to do? You're going to pull out your gun and shoot him? No. But in a situation like that, you might be justified in pulling out your pepper spray and spraying him in the face so you can disengage from him. And again, I said might. Laws do vary but you need to carry other self-defense options. Next one. Not being on your best behavior while armed. And this is a huge one. An armed society, 
is a polite society. That is 1,000% true. You need to be on your best behavior when you're armed. Because let's say you climb into a cab and you feel the driver has overcharged you. And because you spent the last two hours at the bar drinking, all of a sudden, pulling out your concealed carry weapon and pointing it in his face for overcharging you might seem like a good idea at the time. Nope. No, no. Seriously, you have to be on your absolute best behavior when you conceal carry in public. Plus, if there is a shooting and there are independent witnesses, they'll testify that you did everything to try to de-escalate the situation. You did nothing to provoke the situation. So be on your best behavior. And finally, honorable mention, if you can afford to put an attorney on retainer before you start EDCing your concealed carry handgun, do it. Because if you get arrested, use that one phone call to call your attorney who is on retainer. Very important. If you have enough money to afford to put an attorney on retainer, do it. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please stay safe out there. And please keep these mistakes in mind. Thank you. I'll see you guys soon.